everyone, good morning, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ashley, and on my channel I talk all about applique, embroidery, Etsy, and running your own small business from home. Um, so today I'm going to bring you guys along as I'm working on orders, switching up my schedule a little bit this week. I normally work all day and vlog on Fridays. It's actually Wednesday today when I'm recording this. Just tallied up, I have 25 jackets to do today. Hopefully I can get through most, if not all of them, although I am waiting on a couple to be delivered by UPS today, so we'll see when they get here. Um, and then I only have two birthday shirts left to do for the week. Um, I did work quite a bit yesterday. Um, I got all but the two of my birthday shirts done. And then um, enough jackets where I was shipping on time, but not ahead of schedule. So I'm going to try to get the week's worth done today. I'm actually not super busy. Um, it's like it's been every other week for me on Etsy. One week I'm super crazy busy, have so many orders, I can just barely keep up. And then the next week, I'm like, almost done on a Wednesday. I don't know. Um, anyone else experiencing that? It's literally every other week right now for me. Crazy. It's usually just so busy this time of year. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, take, I'm just trying to welcome the break every other week and um, try to do some other stuff that I need to be doing as well. Um, so first things first, I do need to still get my box of jackets still sorted out. Um, they came yesterday. And so I started that last night, but didn't get through it. So I'm going to finish that real quick, get my machines up and going for the day, um, like the normal oiling and cleaning, and then I'll pick up back, pick back up with you guys um, when I'm actually working. So today's extra tip on the vlog is going to be how to clean out your bobbin area. So don't judge mine. Mine's dirty, like usual. Honestly, I focus more on the mechanical parts than getting everything else clean. I use just a little bit of canned air. Literally a spritz or two, don't use too much because it can freeze parts of your machine. Next part I do is take, I just use a little bitty brush that came with the machine. And I just clean out in here. There's usually some gunk that kind of accumulates in there. I try to get it off. You see some there too. As you can see, a bunch of gunk. Um, and I get as much right there as I can. Then, before I oil it, I follow the little directions on the inside here. I don't know how people, I see people demonstrate this and they oil it and they don't turn. I, I don't know how they're oiling the right spot. That's my rant. But I turn the knob on the back so that the hook is up. Again, clean that part off there. Clean all that. I usually try to get in the back again because it kind of opens up a little bit. Then, oil pin goes in this side right here. With your hook in the correct spot, you can now actually get to the correct spot you're supposed to oil. And I just put like a little drop on it. And then, that's it. I just put my bobbin back in, turn the machine on the rest of the way. It is going to be out of, um, tell you that you're, let's see, what does it call it? It tells you you need to click the wrong spot and then remove it, and then you're all done. Also, this is only something that needs to be done once a day. I run, I do this once a day when I work all day, and I don't do it again unless I would notice a problem. I never do. I mean, I run these things 12 hours sometimes, and unless they get dirty again, I don't go back and oil it again. It does not need to be done after every item. That's that's a lot of oil. But um, just once is fine. The needle bars, I get asked how often I do these, and honestly... Um, maybe once a month, probably not even that, maybe every couple months, um, unless there's an issue again. I, I just don't oil them regularly. They don't need oil all the time, um, but if they're squeaking or just not moving as freely as they should, then go ahead and oil them. You pull them down. And there's a little felt pad up here. You just want to put the oil, just a drop of oil directly above that. So to make the best use of my time that I have left this week, I've actually decided I'm going to run all three machines on straight embroidery today for my jackets. I only have two kids shirts left and they're ones that they take a little bit, but they're not difficult. If that makes sense. Um, they just take about 50 minutes each. I think I'm going to save those and just do those um, probably tomorrow morning when I have my daughter with me. Um, those are easy to do with her here. I can start it, um, get it all trimmed, and then essentially walk away and um, just stay like in the other room or something so I can hear if the thread breaks or just come back and check on it later. 
Um, I think that's probably the best use of my time. Um, the jackets are a little bit more labor intensive and I need to be here constantly changing them out and changing them over to do the names. Um, so I'm going to do that today while I have um, childcare and then um, try to knock out as much of that as possible. So I have 25 jackets. That's actually really not too bad. Um, we figured out that just over eight per machine for the entire day. I mean, hopefully I can get that done. Um, but that's it. So what I'm doing here is I'm prepping all my fast frames. I use fast frames for 99% of my jackets. Um, I tape tear away to the back of them. I use just a pre-cut seven by seven tear away on my six by six fast frames. Yes, I have a lot of them. I think I have 12 nowadays. I could honestly use a couple more, but this is good. Um, and I use just cheap masking tape. Um, I prefer this over sticky stabilizer. Uh, it's just a little bit faster for me and a lot more economical cost wise. Um, that and sticky just not my favorite. Um, I would actually kind of like to find a sticky that comes in pre-cut sizes that I could use. I, it might speed things up. It might be, and for that might be worth the extra cost, but I haven't found that yet. So if anyone has any awesome sources for sticky stabilizer, let me know down below. I'm um, definitely willing to give something a try. Anything that could speed it up is probably worth the extra cost right now. Um, so those are all ready. Um, I do have my designs transferred. So two of the machines, I, I changed my mind on doing the applique shirts. I'm going to transfer the designs to that machine as well and then get started.
So as I was trimming this jacket up, I can see that there's an issue on one of my machines. Um, you can see my, I'm not seeing hardly any, if any, bobbin thread. And this is most likely caused by a dirty bobbin case. So I'm gonna, I actually pause that machine. Um, I'm gonna pull the bobbin case out. It had, I had just taken this um, design off that machine, so it hasn't got very far on the next one, but I wanna fix it. Now there's nothing gonna be wrong with this jacket itself. It's real small satin stitching. It's not gonna pull or anything like that. If it was super thick satin stitching like on an applique, um, I'd wanna check it for to make sure it wasn't gonna pull, but on this lettering, this type of design, it's not going to. Um, so this is perfectly acceptable. I'm just fixing it so I don't have future problems. So I'm gonna grab the bobbin case so here's the bobbin case from that machine and it doesn't look bad like what I'm looking at it's gonna be super hard to see in the camera it's right underneath this flap here I'm gonna take my bobbin out and um, check under that flap I use a business card or I actually just have these alcohol prep pads laying um, in my cleaning stuff for my machines and I like using them I just slide it under there where you pull the bobbin thread through and I got just a teeny tiny, you can almost not even see it, amount of thread out of there, or dust, lint, whatever out of there. You'd be surprised how much just a teeny tiny bit can mess up your bobbin thread. Um, so now I'm just going to re, re-put the bobbin back in and put it back on my machine. And once this design's done, um, I will look at it again on the next um, jacket and make sure that that fixed the problem. It should have, though. And I know that this is a bobbin issue because you can see it across multiple colors. You can see the bobbin thread a little bit on this teal green, but um, there's not much difference. And that's just because it's a whiter um, fill design versus, but the satin on the green, the teal green and the satin on here, the satin on the silver, none of it's showing that. So that tells me that it's not just the one top thread, it's the bobbin thread. And again, just from experience, I know when my machines do that, there's a tiny bit of lint in that small space in the bobbin case. All right, so after I fixed the bobbin case, I restarted the machine and it all went haywire from there. Um, it's, I backed it up a little bit so it'd go over those last couple stitches and it ended up bird nesting because it was like on the dot of the eye. So that was my fault. Then it broke a needle and then I tried to restart it and it's messing up again. So I took that as my cue and it was time to take a break and walked away, went and had lunch. So I'm getting back started now. I still gotta deal with this mess over here. Um, and figure out if I can get this design started again um, without putting a hole in the fleece and salvage it because I don't have another one of those jackets on hand and I don't want to have to delay the order to give me time to order a new one. So, stress, I'm going to try to fix that first and get going. I've actually got through, ooh, um, I don't know how, I didn't count up how many, but it's almost everything that needs to ship today and tomorrow. So now I just have Fridays left. Um, and of course there's more on Friday because that's orders that came in last Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, so there's like three days worth. Um, so I'm probably not quite halfway done yet and it is 1145. So that's not too bad. Um, but got to get this thing going again. Um, it sounded like it was going to break a needle again. So I just stopped it and walked away. Um, sometimes you got to do that, but Everything else is running pretty smoothly. I'm gonna get these finished and then I'll catch back up with you guys in a little bit. All right, so I was able to salvage that jacket, thank goodness. Um, I did put just an extra piece of cutaway on there for when I was doing the name, um, just to give it some extra stability because it kind of tore through the stabilizer that was already there. So I just took a little corner piece off and put it right there just for that one letter. Um, so I'm going to trim that around that now. Um, so I've been trimming and folding my jackets as I go. That definitely helps me to stay productive and to make sure I get stuff shipped that I get done. I still have, I think, 12 or 14 jackets to go. So I'm, I'm not quite to halfway done. I think it's 14. Not quite halfway done. I started with 25. Um, but making progress. Definitely should have made a lot more progress, but it is what it is. Um, but I don't have to have these all done today to ship. Just And I've actually got one more to do that has to ship tomorrow. The rest will be Friday. So it's quite a bit later. It's 1.45, and I'm getting ready to start packing orders. I've got a couple here done that I needed to trim up, and then some more finishing. Um, I have six or seven jackets left to do. Um, and... Uh, I'm probably not going to get those completely done to mail out today, but I'm still going to try 
to get them done this afternoon. Um, and then I do have three shirts that I finished yesterday evening after um, the post office closed that I need to um, just trim and heat press real quick. And I'm going to package and make those today too. Um, but overall, I've actually got quite a bit done today. Um, it's so much faster when I can run all three machines on just embroidery and not applique. Um, that's kind of been my plan of attack for the weeks the past several weeks is try to get all my applique shirts done early in the week and then when I have some dedicated time to really work um, that way I can run all three machines on embroidery um, it just goes it feels like it goes so much faster So as I'm trimming up this jacket, I have one just little loop in one of the names. So I'm using this tool called the Snag Nabbit. Um, I actually, I've heard people talk about this before, but Kelly over at Embroidery Nurse, I saw her use it and like demonstrate how to use it once. And I'm like, okay, I'll finally get one. I don't understand what the big thing is, but y'all, it's perfect. Like it was just teeny tiny looped up above the surface and it just pushes it down in and now there's nothing. It's... Like I said, it was just like a teeny tiny little flaw um, and now it's perfect, all ready to go now.